Hey guys, welcome back to Exotic Car Hacks where we teach you how to stop losing money on cars. Now here today, are, we are going to be reviewing not just my new GT2 RS, but also my new GT3 RS YSAC, both of which cars have YSAC packs, both of which cars are the best possible variations of themselves. Now on this side, we have a 2018 GT2 RS with a very, very high $350,000 window sticker. Now it means all leather options are done, is all of the best of the best is on this car, including the HREs for a design component. And on this side, we have a $322,000 fully loaded GT3 RS YSAC, which has a $150,000 market adjustment, which means that this car is now selling on the internet between $450,000 and $500,000. This is a very loaded 2024. And on this side is a 2018 that when it first came out was also selling for 200K over sticker, but today can be bought for around 50 to 60K over sticker, making these basically 400K variations of the GT series, both of which currently are on sale in the US market. Now, I own both cars, and one of the things we always talk about in Exotic Car Hacks is giving you real reviews, not based on what manufacturers want you to know, but on the reality of what it's like to own these cars. So I will never review a car I don't own or haven't owned previously, and that I haven't lived with or can't tell you much about just because I've borrowed it from someone. So I do own both of these cars. This one I've had less than two weeks with, and this one right here I've had the chance to drive for now a month and a half. So one of the things that I think you immediately notice on the new GT3 RS is that its design is absolutely bonkers. You get these huge vents and huge holes, and the aero on this car just seems so extreme and magnificent. It's very large, it's very in your face, and it grabs your attention. And while the color is more muted, obviously, this is a color option choice, not really like a, it's a, a hint of preference, right? You like blondes, I like brunettes, doesn't make a difference. But right away, you notice the width difference of the GT3 compared to the old GT2. Now, generally speaking, this was the most exciting Porsche that was ever made. I'll give you a good example here with the keys as well. Take a look at this. This is a, G, a 992 key, this is a GT2 key. Clearly, it's the same key, but you can see that this key is actually wider than this key. So they follow that same pattern of width, which is just really interesting how to do that. So as a product, I've always said Porsche is an excellent product. As a, as a brand, I've always said Porsche is absolute fucking garbage because of the dealers they hire to do their bidding for them and sell their cars. Let's take a look here for one second and focus on what you get with the best version of a GT2 RS versus what you get with the best version of a GT3 RS. And there are some nuances that need to be picked up. The headlight design has changed significantly. And while I enjoy both headlight designs, I don't think that makes a significant difference in the queue of the car. There is also something else that's very dominant that they've started doing in the US cars that they're not doing in Europe. You can see here that these clear markers are now integrated into the bumper, uh, and these were basically very easily removable. There is currently no clear uh, marker available for the actual uh, US market, so that's why it's orange. And in this particular case, this was upgraded to the Euro marker, but a very different queue in design and very interesting from a perspective standpoint. The YSAC hoods, obviously much larger vents, nothing different here. But the one massive thing you'll notice is how refined this hood vent is versus how gigantically plastic this is. Now we know that on the GT3 RS, the hood vents have always been plastic. On the GT2, uh, they were offered as a carbon option. I believe that they should have been offered as a carbon option here on this car simply because the design element is so much bigger here when looked at on, the, on this fender versus this fender. So I think this is a mistake by Porsche on this side. I don't know why they decided to incorporate so much plastic without a carbon option and offered so much carbon on this on the top part and left the plastic. This would have been a fine feature to add here, turning these carbon, the front carbon, and then some of this plastic pieces all throughout carbon. I think that makes a drastic difference and yet is very small. You'll notice the mirror differences, which are pretty interesting here. One mirror being rounder, the other one being sharper. So again, very small nuances create big, big uh, gaps and differences. You'll see how much wider and more exciting this wheel arch is, along with how beefier and more exciting the tires uh, previously going to the Pilot Sport Cup 2s and now having this whole new Goodyear design, which is very interesting. You'll also notice the much more dramatic vents here, uh, which on the GT2 look much, much more refined and prettier, and on this are much smaller. Now, these can be carbon, just not from the factory again, so a lot of carbon options have to be bought on this, uh, on the aftermarket scene, and a lot of this can be factory on this front. 
And on the rear of the car, you'll notice very basic cues like the 992 carries that light all the way through versus the 991 just carries a tail light. So again, not huge differences. And then again, on the hood here, on the little arrow kit here, on both cars, you'll notice that again, the carbon is significant here on the GT2 and the plastic is significant here. But let's be clear, the GT3 RS's arrow and like very intelligently designed arrow is insane compared to the old one. So you can really see how dramatic this car is in aero versus how subtle this one is, giving it almost like a huge generational shift from like a 993 to like seeing a, a 991, you know, 10 years later. So I think this is very cool and, and very attractive. This is very wow factor and holy shit, what am I looking at? So that's just the design alone. Now let's take a look inside the cars, which is something completely different. Now in this side, you'll see that the interiors on the GT2 RSs and on the 991 series was very clean and again, very usable. It works fantastic. There's no issues here with the interior. It's just not very exciting. And honestly, the interface is very old. Now on this side, on the other side of the coin, right, with the GT3 RS, you'll notice two key things when opening the doors. First, you have lightweight glass. You don't have this on this. You have carbon doors. You don't have that on this. So the doors get annoyingly not shut because they're too light. And then the other thing you'll also notice is the seat structure is almost identical on both cars, which I think it is the same exact seat. Like, I don't think there's really many nuanced differences. And then the other thing to notice here that I think is also key here to the interior is that you have, uh, again, the new design of what I consider to be the 992 perfection of the interior, which gives you a blend of the 991 and the old 993 interface that had a separate console. So very big differences in the steering wheel is also spectacular with all the knobs and stuff for the track adjustment, very different from this car, which has none of that. But the one thing I will say, the paddles are much more dominant on the GT3 RS than all the other 992s. And the same paddles are not dominant here, but they're carbon at least. So interior wise, obviously the 992s have had significant interior improvements. The 991, I would argue that the one big change though that you'll notice is there's a lot more leather components in this and there's a lot more Alcantara components. Now, there's an argument to this because my belief is that the Alcantara components in this, while racy, also make the car very cheap. This has a much more luxurious, exciting, badass feel to it. So there, there's a very, there, there are very big nuances that you notice when driving uh, that really make this still an iconic car despite this having come out. I know a lot of times when there's a new product that's the greatest and newest, we'll have to see how the GT2 variant basically comes here, but I'll assume that just because we've seen how Porsche its customers, this car in a GT2 variant will probably be 300K over sticker in the first two years it's out. So putting the car probably somewhere in the 700K range uh, versus these cars are comparable from a dollar standpoint. You can also see how drastically improved the magnesium design wheels are uh, on one versus the old mesh style. Uh, the old mesh style can be found here on my 918, which is again, very different and very exciting. This is the same wheel that came on that car in black. Uh, but you can see the differences here that the new, I mean, the, the new GT3's wheel design is, is flawless from the factory. It requires no modifications at all. Very similar actually to the R101 lightweight HRE that I've put on this car. But nonetheless, this is a perfect design for the car, so it needs nothing. So my only real grape here between these two cars is that one, with the GT2 RS, take a look at this. I think it's, it's very interesting. So here you don't have a button to pop the trunk, but I want to show you something because I think it's pretty interesting, generally speaking. We're going to pop the trunk here so you can see the carbon. And you have some kind of room here to basically put something. Now on this car, however, you really don't. And there's a reason there's no button on this. So there's no cargo in this whatsoever, except the back seats. You have some cargo, very minor cargo, and you have all this air on this car. And so you have this. So this is basically what my STO has. Absolutely no room in the front for anything. So you can't put anything here. Like this is just, a, I don't even know why this is here. It's probably here because they want you to work on this or they want to work on it themselves when it's broken. But nonetheless, like you have, as you can see, zero here. There is zero room for anything. So you can't even put a piece of paper here. And then here you have some cargo, which somewhat is, I think, nice. It's nice to have some space to put stuff. Uh, and then you can put a cage in the back and you don't have to delete all your cargo. But truly making this very interesting because the GT2 variant is the ultimate track variant for Porsche. The GT3 RS has always been done as a good track variant, but also an entry level track variant than the GT2. So most people daily their GT3 RSs or drive them. And so in this case, it's interesting to see that they've made no accommodations whatsoever for using this car on a daily. And it's also much rougher on a suspension basis than this car. So 
The argument becomes, which is the better car? And honestly, this is the argument. I'm, I'm putting myself at a risk of losing seventy, eighty thousand dollars over the next few years, or should I say over the next few months, maybe even, right? And there's a lot of adjustment to this that can still come down. These cars came down a sticker an hour back up to 50 over going 100 over. So if you look at it from that perspective, buying the right GT2 RS will always be safer than buying the most hype new GT3 RS. And while the internet favors this car all day long over everything Porsche has ever created, I would argue that the GT2 RS is still not only a better bang for the buck, but honestly, not that bad of a design swap from both cars. I think this is equally beautiful in its own right, and I'm very, very OCD and very picky. This is one of the reasons that Exotic Car Hacks, we don't have to choose cars. I own all these cars so I can have a different flavor anytime I feel like having one. But in this case, we can clearly see the differences. The old GT2 RS still holds power over the new GT3 RS, despite its less wild appearance on the surface. So if you want to learn more about how to hack cars, do not forget to go ahead and click the link in the description. Learn or join our community is being the second link. And of course, let me know your thoughts. Which one do you think holds the power of being the ultimate champion for Porsche's GT cars? The old GT2 RS or the new GT3 RS? Both Y-Sacks, both around the same price. And ultimately, you let me know. I'll catch you next time for another video on exotic car hacks. You know, everyone knows me as this car guy. I'm a big car collector, I love cars, and more importantly, they know me for making good decisions, gaining in and out of cars in order to maximize my return. But what if I told you that one of the ways I was able to buy all these cars has been by trading watches? But I'm not here to tell you about my other company, Watch Trading Academy. Instead, I'm here to tell you about a question I get asked at Watch Trading Academy a lot, which is, how do you sell watches confidently and more importantly, in a safe manner online? Simply put, I use this company called Grailsy. It is a safe and very transparent way to sell a watch online. Not only do they handle the whole transaction from A to Z, but they make it safe for both the buyer and the seller. And because they really cater to real buyers and not just other watch traders, as a seller, you're always getting a great premium on a watch, especially when you're selling it. And as a buyer, you never know when you can find a great deal. So definitely check them out at grailz.com. They're an incredible company and they've been the best place to safely buy and sell luxury watches. Grailz, buy and sell iconic timepieces.